friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jasmine and today's video is going to be a review of all of the products that I have collected from my bathroom that is completely full, basically, of empty bottles and stuff and my makeup collection as well. I've gone through and got rid of all of the empty bottles so I wanted to run through all the things that I've finished using and review them for you. So I've got a little box full of the makeup and then the bathroom stuff's over there. So we'll start with the makeup I guess. So the first product is the MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation? Powder Foundation Plus? I don't know what it's called. I'm in the shade NC15 and it's basically just a pressed powder. It comes with one of these. I never use mine. Basically is a pressed powder and I put mine on top of my foundation. I do that usually it adds another layer of coverage and where my skin can be very blotchy and when it can have a lot of spots and dark circles under my eyes I do tend to feel like the extra layer of coverage goes a long way to help me. This is a product that I will always repurchase. I've got another one in my drawers at the moment that's full and I'm using it. I think that they're 23 50 they might be more now. Mac keeps seeming to put their prices up, the cheeky buggers. The next product is also one by Mac. It is the Skin Base Visage Prep and Prime Skin but Worth the blah, blah, blah. So I know it's a primer, I'll tell you that much. I don't really know exactly what the name is. Mac Prep and Prime Skin Base Visage, 30 milliliters, 10 US fluid ounces. This was one of my favourite primers, I really enjoyed using it. I definitely feel that I've found better primers since I've got more into makeup. I did buy this quite early on into when I was um, getting into makeup. I probably had it way longer than I should have done and I probably didn't finish it until way later than I should have done. But I did enjoy using it, it did make my skin feel very smooth. I feel like it worked as how a primer should really. I think it was nice. I'm not sure if it was worth the money, but I think that about a lot of MAC products these days. It's probably not one that I would repurchase just because I found so many other primers lately and in more recent years that I find do a better job for my skin personally. We may as well get all the MAC products out of the way. So the last MAC product that I've finished not very recently, I finished this ages ago. I've been saving some of these makeup products up for ages to do this video. But it's the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer uh, in the shade NW15. It's honestly one of the best concealers that I ever used. It never creased, it never wrinkled under the eyes. It used to stay put for absolutely hours. I really enjoyed using it. And I'm not actually sure why I haven't repurchased it since. It might be because, again, it's a little bit pricey. But it is. it was a really good concealer. And I know they come in so many shades. And I've only ever heard good things about them from other people. So despite the price tag, I probably should go and get myself another one. Because some of the concealers that I use at the moment, they're quite hit and miss. Speaking of hit and miss concealers... I've got the Rimmel Wake Me Up Anti-Fatigue. Oh, it's all scratched off. I can't even read it anymore. But this was one of the concealers that I had difficulty with. It was a radiance concealer, which I don't tend to use very often. And when I first bought it, I wasn't actually sh sure that that's what it was. And I didn't really understand what that was. So where I was putting it on spots, to be honest, it is probably down to me but I was putting this Radiance Concealer over my spots which were already sort of protruding from my face and that was actually drawing more attention to them. So, you know, my bad, but Radiance Concealers are not for me. I like a matte concealer. I want my skin to look even and flat unless I'm highlighting, in which case I'll buy a highlighter. The next product is a very weird one. I got this on a new look order. I was just trying to get free shipping, so I ended up adding a Refresh and Prep Skin Energizing Spray by New Look to my basket, and I really never understood what this did or whether it did anything at all. All it says is Refresh and Prep Skin Energizing Spray, Spritz onto Prep and Plump Bare Skin or recharge your makeup. So they think that you can chuck this on your face before you do your makeup to plump the skin. And they also apparently think that you can spray it over your face 
after you've done your makeup to refresh it. I have included this in the video, not because I used it all up, but because I chucked it down the sink because it was only $4.99. I didn't understand what it was meant to do. I don't like products that are a two in one. I want one product to do one thing. I want another product to do another thing. They are separate entities. I don't trust two in one products. So I chucked this away. I did try and use it a couple of times. It didn't really do anything. I sprayed it over the top of my makeup. It didn't ruin it, but it didn't refresh it. And I spritzed it onto my bare skin before my makeup and it didn't make it any more plump. So I just thought this was a waste of my time and um, a waste of money. So I wouldn't recommend this product and I will not be buying another one, but I'm glad that I got my free shipping for 4 dollars extra on that new look order. Next, I've got a makeup store foundation in the shade Vanilla and it was the liquid foundation. I'm not really sure where the makeup store ever really took off. I was really intrigued by them when I lived in Australia because I'm fairly sure that they were slightly more popular in Australia. So I did end up buying a few products when it came to the UK and some of their stuff was really good. I had a mascara from them that I loved for ages. I also had a blush by them that I used a lot, but this foundation, for a start, I ordered it online and it was just never gonna match my colour. Mm, it actually doesn't look that bad at the moment, but it is far, it was far too yellow for me and it was also far too dark. So I did sort of save it for a summer foundation and I sort of got away with it over the summer. As you can see, it's not actually technically empty, but I will be chucking it because I, I just don't use it. The consistency is far too sticky and gooey for me. It's very thick. It's like a bit of creme fraiche that's been sitting around on the counter for too long. And I think it smells weird. It smells a bit like glue and that's not really what I want on my face. Also, I've seen that Makeup Store seems to have been getting rid of a few of their stores, so I don't know if I don't really know what's happening with the company, but this never worked for me. It's not going to start and I'm going to get rid of it and I won't be buying one again. Then I've got my absolute favourite thing in the world, but it is no more. Actually, is it? Is it no more? Where's my phone? So for a very long time, I've been very emotional because I heard rumours that they were stopping selling Gimme Brow, but you can buy it from John Lewis right now. Granted it's gone up in price and granted they've like redone the packaging and whatever but this is like one of the best brow products ever for me anyway. I've never been one of those girls who jumped on like the brow fleek thing and like I can't do my eyebrows properly. All I ever use is a brow um, mascara type thing just because I've already got quite a thick brows as it is. I don't tend to have to fill them in or um, like sculpt them because this I appear to have been quite fruitful on the brow front so Gimme Brow was great because it literally you just swipe it through and that is your brows done and it fills them in slightly, it gives them like more of a shape and it also sets them in place so they're not flying around in the breeze all day. When this ran out I started looking for cheaper alternatives because it is quite expensive and look at the bloody size of it. So at the moment I'm using a NYX one and NYX brown mascara which is really good this is what it, it is today I probably would invest in one of these again now I know that you can still buy them and um, so I might start having a little look into that it is with a heavy heart that I announced that I finally finished my Illamasqua foundation it is the Illamasqua skin base foundation and I was in the shade SB 4.5 whatever that means but this was one of the best foundations that I ever 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 got my hands on my mum sent me a very voucher like two years ago and I decided to spend it on a Illamasqua foundation because I'd heard so many good things about the brand this was my first Illamasqua product and I absolutely loved it like it was just the perfect finish it matched my skin perfectly, it made me so happy. I just heard birds singing and deers galloping and the sun was always shining when I wore this foundation and as far as I can remember, it's expensive and as far as I can remember, I don't have that amount of money sitting around in my bank account ready for me to just go adding stuff like this to my basket. One thing that did annoy me about this product is I know for a fact that there's a little bit left in here 
but the shape of this bottle and like it's very hard you can't really squeeze it there's no way i'm able to get it out and oh my god unless i hack into the bottle with a knife okay i'm gonna set this to one side i'm gonna hack into the bottle with a knife later not on camera because if i stab myself i don't want that immortalized on the internet then we've got super cat by soap and glory which is a liquid eyeliner i've repurchased it since i'm wearing it today because i just think it's a great eyeliner pen it's super skinny and super easy to control like it's almost foolproof i feel like if you're not as confident with doing your eyeliner which i certainly am not i can only do it with a pen i can't do it with a brush i can't do it with a dippy stick or whatever I find that these are so great for not only practicing with but they're also so cheap and if you mess it up it doesn't matter too much because you're not wiping away like pounds and pounds worth of makeup every time you mess up and using pens like this is what taught me how to get my eyeliner sort of semi-decent looking so I'd really recommend using this. I always have one of these in my collection. They're only about six quid. They might be 6.50 now, I don't know. Inflation. Then the next makeup product, the final makeup product, is the Benefit Their Real Mascara. I don't think I need to say too much about this. Everyone that I've ever met or encountered on the internet absolutely adores this. I adore it. Uh, I feel like there are similar if not better mascaras on the market i mean there's a reason i haven't repurchased it it's not the most expensive mascara in the world i did enjoy using it but i have found better ones this is a love of mine but it's not on my repurchase list just yet okay moving on to bath and body this video is way longer than i thought it would be so the first thing is this blistex lip conditioner it's got spf 15 uh it was just oh hello uh it was just like a yellowy sort of color uh to be honest lip balms for me are like a very particular and very like big deal my lips resemble the bottom of a riverbed in a drought so like very crusty like very cracked all the time i have to really keep on top of them and unfortunately this just didn't cut the mustard i was applying this probably every half an hour through the winter at some stages until I found the lip balm that I'm using at the moment. So I don't know, this one might be better for summer when the weather's not so harsh and your lips aren't literally falling off your face. Uh, but this one I won't be repurchasing. I found much, much better ones. The Blistex Intensive Repair, or I, I think it might be called the Medicated one, but it's in the dark blue one. It looks exactly like this, but it's in a dark blue tub. That one is my favorite. Next, we've got this Original Source Body Wash and it's the lavender and tea tree 100 natural fragrance vegan shower gel these are some of my favorite body washes on the face of the earth they all smell gorgeous i want to eat half of the scents be careful of the tingling uh what is it is it tea tree i think it might be tea tree as well the one that tingles people's uh nether regions i absolutely love these this was really nice i used to like using this just before bed because the lavender scent is so relaxing and I probably will be getting another one of these. The only thing is I have to wait until they're in the shops for like a pound because sometimes they're not a pound and I don't really want to spend more than a pound on one of these because I'm stingy and I'm a student. But any of these original source shower gels, I, I want to put money on that you'll enjoy them because I really love them. Then in skincare, we've got the La Roche-Posay Efficlar Purifying Foam Gel for Oily Sensitive Skin. And this was probably one of the first products that I ever started using when I started to take my skincare seriously. So for a very long time, I had quite terrible spotty skin. There's barely any pictures of me around that time because I was quite self-conscious about it. And I would use products from the body shop. I would get sort of, you know, the quite cheap Neutrogena stuff or the Clearasil or the Witch Sticks. And I would just basically spend a few quid here, a few quid there, never really sort of investing in my skincare. And it wasn't until I bought the La Roche-Posay three-step anti-blemish system in which this skincare came with, this specific wash came with, that's when I started seeing an improvement in my skin and that's where I started to feel far more confident. So I do actually attribute like my clearer skin these days to the fact that I started using La Roche-Posay and started actually researching the skincare that I was using. It's quite a velvety wash and even though it lathers, which I know isn't the best for my skin type now, at the time it really, really worked. It really helped clean my skin and I felt like flawless. 
Then we've got the crazy colour semi permanent hair cream, hair semi permanent candy floor semi permanent hair colour cream, which is the shade number 65, if that matters to any of you. Sometimes I have a little bit of a crisis. I realise that I'm over the age of 20, I realise that I'm nearly at the end of university, I realise that I live alone in a flat in London with my boyfriend, I realise I'm an adult and sometimes all that will help me is to dye my hair pink and this is what I use, I really like using this, it's very easy to use, you just have to start off with like a very pale um, white blonde base very clean stick this over the top leave it on for an hour and suddenly you feel like you don't have as many responsibilities as you did before i did actually get sent a complimentary one of these in the past and i haven't had any since which makes me upset because i like free crazy color hair dyes but these are semi-permanent so if you're looking for something if you also have commitment issues like myself um they do so many colors of these and it'd be really fun to like sort of experiment and see what's going on if you also fancied it i've always got a little stash in my bathroom cupboard i've got some lavender i've got some candy floss those two are my favorites probably and you can get them on Amazon for really, really, really cheap. I think you can get four for like £11.99, something like that. And then the final product on my empties list. Breaks my heart again that this is empty because I really can't afford another one. But it is the Macadamia Professional Nourishing Moisture Mask. And I got this off... Where did I get it from? I definitely got it online and I definitely paid a lot of money for it. It might have been Beauty Bay or one of those websites, maybe Look Fantastic or something. I think it was about £25, £26. It's a big tub and it did last me a while, probably because I was being very like sparing with it as well. But honestly, if you've ever bleached your hair, if your hair feels a bit gross at the ends, like a bit straw-like, this is like the best mask. If I could put my entire body in a bath full of this, I would. Like I know I've been whinging about the price. I know it is a very expensive product, but it really does the job. Like it's a really, really nice mask. And it's definitely one that I would like to repurchase in the future. Again, I've just got to work out how I can sell one of my kidneys on the black market to afford it. So that was my list of empty products that I've been hoarding in a little box under my bed for the last six months probably. I'm very glad I got around to filming this video. <laughs> Thank you so much for clicking on my face. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, uh, comment if you fancy it, if you've got anything to comment, um, and subscribe to my channel if you think we can be friends. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, morning, life, and I will see you soon, hopefully. Bye.